Different cells will have different organelles depending on the functions that they serve. Prokaryotic organisms are going to have different organelles than eukaryotic organisms. And remember, prokaryotes are organisms that lack a nucleus and membrane-bound organelle, so they're going to be relatively simple compared to our eukaryotic organisms. They're going to be pretty small, and in general, they will have fewer components. Our eukaryotic organisms, including plants, animals, protists, fungi, these will all have cells with membrane bound or organelles that are surrounded by a membrane and we can compare different types of cells like plant and animal cells both eukaryotes and see for example that a plant cell has a chloroplast and an animal cell does not so let's look at these two pictures we have the nucleus drawn simply here a plasma membrane which is the surrounding double layer around the cell which if we zoom in closely we see is a phospholipid bilayer the cell wall with plant cells and certain prokaryotic cells and mitochondria, this oval with the squiggly line, our vacuoles here and here, chloroplasts, again, only in plant cells and ribosomes represented frequently by little dots. Sometimes you'll see a mitochondrion drawn very uh, technically and they look a little bit more like this than the simplified drawing here, but sometimes you'll just see an oval with a squiggly line. So you need to be able to recognize both types of pictures. And you'll also, potentially see a chloroplast drawn more like this than the one I have in my picture. These are stacks of thylakoids, which are an important part of the chloroplast. Be able to recognize chloroplast as an important organelle with these kind of stack-like structures within a plant cell only. So getting back into the differences between animal and plant cells, which you might remember again from other science classes, plant cells have cell walls or and they look kind of like these geometric shapes. Animal cells do not. Plant cells also have chloroplasts where animal cells do not. And plant cells tend to have one large vacuole for water storage where animals can have smaller vacuoles or multiple vacuoles. So make sure you recognize those main differences between plant and animal cells. That's, those aren't the only differences, but those are key important ones. So recognizing our organelles by picture, again, here's our simplified mitochondria. This is for energy. So you need to be able to understand that the mitochondria is where the cellular energy is created or made in a process called cellular respiration. You need to know more than just the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Here are simple circles with kind of a blank space in them. That would be a vacuole, which again is for storage. Our ribosomes are represented by little dots, and this is where proteins are made. Our nucleus is going to be in the center of the cell. Sometimes you'll see chromosomes if they're, the DNA is condensed represented in them, but it's going to store our DNA or our genetic information in eukaryotic organisms, and we'll get to that in a second. Our cell membrane is going to be represented, if we zoom in closely, by these this phospholipid bilayer, and its purpose is to provide a semi-permeable barrier, letting some things in and some things out of the cell in order for the cell to maintain homeostasis and do everything that it needs to do. Our cell wall is going to provide structure and support, another layer of protection of the cell, again, not in animal cells, and it's going to be kind of geometric in shape. And our chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis, only in plant cells, so we're not going to see these in animal cells. Now, if we look back at our plant and animal cells, these are both eukaryotic organisms, meaning they have a true nucleus, or they have a nucleus, and other membrane-bound organelles. So organelles like the mitochondria, organelles like vacuoles, and these are generally larger and more complex. Prokaryotic organisms are more primitive. We think they evolved first. They typically only have a few key features. So they're very simple, they're very, very small. They're more abundant on Earth than eukaryotic cells, but um, they're very different. So in prokaryotic cells, we do not have any of those membrane-bound organelles. We don't have a mitochondria, we don't have vacuoles, we don't have a nucleus. Instead, the DNA is just free-floating within the cell in a feature we call the nucleoid. We do have ribosomes because all cells do make proteins and have to do protein synthesis. We do have a cell membrane to contain the cytoplasm and the essential features of that cell. Um, and that's about it. Sometimes there'll be external features like our flagella, which is for movement, or cilia, also for movement. Those are small hair-like structures. Those can exist in prokaryotic organisms, but again, not all prokaryotic cells have those. So again, prokaryotic organisms, much more simple, no nucleus, no membrane-bound organelles, very, very simple features. Plant and animal cells are both eukaryotic. A few other organelles I wanted to mention 
include the endoplasmic reticulum. We both have the smooth ER and the rough ER. The rough ER contains ribosomes. And this organelle is a network of tubules and sacs that helps transport proteins and other materials within the cell. This right here is could be a, a lysosome, maybe a peroxisome, but it's a lysosome that is a membrane-bound sac that has enzymes that helps break down waste products and other damaged organelles, kind of like a garbage disposal of the cell. And then of course the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body that is responsible for packaging and shipping materials within the cell or out of the cell. Now that is just a quick glimpse at some important organelles, the basics. Obviously there are more organelles you probably encountered or will encounter in your biology class. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.